Let's make a minnow bait. This is an AC Shiner. Killer lure, but a couple of things about it. Well, I only want two hooks. I don't want three. This bait is made out of cedar. In the old days, I'd have got a chunk of white cedar or red cedar, taken my jackknife and started to carve. Well, simplifying things is what it's all about for me these days. And I wanna show you the simplest way in the world to recreate an old favorite. I've started out making a mold out of high strength two. You can see how to do that elsewhere on the website. What I've done next is taken a lip. This is a polycarbonate lip, or Lexan, I'm not sure, but it's super, super tough. And what I've done is shaped it so it's exactly the same shape as the original AC Shiner. So I had to carve this down a little bit. It was not difficult with a little grinder and a little tool. I've put a little groove in the top of it. If you look closely here at the mold, you'll see that there's a little bit of a groove in the lip itself. What I'm going to do first is mix up a little bit of standard uh, Alumilite clear resin. This stuff is just a little bit heavier than water. And what I'm going to do is pour just a little belly of this stuff, about six grams. And what this will do is give me a nice white belly that's very, very strong and it'll hold my hook hanger in place so it doesn't get pushed around by the foam that I'm going to follow it with. Well, if I wanted to, I could add uh, BBs to this, number nine shot, or I could add tungsten powder and it would create a heavier lure, plus it would give me a much lower center of gravity or I could put the weight forward, backward to make the lure behave differently. And I could also dust this mold with a, a Luma dust because I want to avoid painting. And I'm also going to make sure I've got this centered really well. It looks pretty good. Now let's just pour some of this into the head, into the belly. Let it run back here a little bit. Looks good. That'll take maybe five or six minutes to set. Okay, well that's drying. I'm gonna dust the top of this mold black. My objective in this is to avoid an airbrush. I wanna get a really nice, professional, cool looking finish, but I don't wanna go through the process of an airbrush, a compressor, a ventilator, and all that kind of stuff. So just bear with me as I dust the top of this thing black. When you first start mixing this, it's a creamy color. And then as you continue mixing, all of a sudden it starts to bang and it flashes into sort of a root beer color. And that's when you want to be ready to start pouring. The Aluma foam expands about twice its volume and it goes off much faster than the other foams. There, it's turned to coffee. Pour that beast in there. Foam sets up in just a few minutes, so let's see if we had enough foam to fill this thing up. Feels bulgy, that's a good sign. Well, the back turned out black, that's good. Oh yeah. And I'll take my Dremel tool and just clean this part off. Anyway, there we go. This is where we're at at this point. What's next? Well, just clean it up a little bit. We want to make 
make sure you get everything all cleaned up before you begin finishing it because once you've started finishing it, you can't really clean it up after that. And this is to keep the oil from your hands from affecting the next process, which is going to be a super thin, thin, quick layer of uh, UV cured epoxy. I'm going to put on a very thin layer of this stuff. Now, normally with epoxy I would have to rotate it for several hours. As you will see, with this stuff all I really have to do is expose it to the ultraviolet light for just a few minutes or seconds. I'm just going to set it right now by having it very close to the light. And I think I'll just sort of position this so I can leave it in here. How about like that? There we go. I'll just wait a couple of minutes. Now the next process involves going upstairs and fooling around with a computer. You can grab any image you want off your computer, put it into a paint or a graphics program, resize it, reshape it, or even recolor it to get just what you want. Then print it in your printer. Make sure you pick the right kind of paper. They make paper for both kinds of printers. And when I say paper, I mean clear water slide decal paper. Okay, we've made a decal from the image that we uh, pulled off the computer. It's been stretched uh, so it'll fit on our lure and we've got a right and a left. Now as soon as this epoxy sets up, we'll smooth it off, we'll apply the decal. No paint job. Okay. Oh, this feels pretty good. It's only been uh, 20 minutes and this is ready to go. I'm just going to lightly sand it and then we'll put the final finish on it. It's like 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. I'm just going to smooth out this edge. Every now and then with epoxy you can have a little bit of a foreign agent, a release agent, or just some leftover chemical on the surface. And the epoxy won't marry to it first go around. But a little bit of sanding and another coat usually solves that problem. Here are the decals that we made earlier. I've, I've sprayed a relatively thin layer of clear acrylic on these. The thinner the layer, the more delicate the decal, but it's actually easier to stretch it if you need to on the lure. So. Well, let's give this a shot. Drum roll. This is just lukewarm water. Put the decal in here. There we go. She's starting to lift. And then just slide that off of there like that. And then carefully manipulate it. As it dries, you want to just gently rub those wrinkles. You don't want to get too aggressive, but just make sure you get most of them out. Very nice. Okay, well. I think he's looking just about ready. I've got a little wrinkle here, but I think we can take care of that. Uh -huh. Another thing that's cool about the UV, this is the same paintbrush I've been using for almost two years. You just keep it in aluminum foil and out of the UV and they stay good. Okay, now it's just a matter of putting a coat of this UV Just hit 
that with a little bit of UV and see what it gets us. Mojo, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for this stuff to dry, why don't you get us a snack? Go get us some jerky. Go on, get me some jerky. Good girl. Good girl, Mojo. Good girl. What did you get us? The big dippers? Does this mean you get some too? Do you like this stuff? Very, very good. You should get some. Sit down. Sit. Just whisper. Say woof. <laughs> Not so loud. Just woof. <laughs> no, quiet. Woof. <laughs> no, that's pretty good. Say wine. <laughs> So after the epoxy dries, a little bit of finish sanding and then another coat of epoxy. And look at that, super realistic quote unquote paint jobs without any paint at all. <laughs>